All right, welcome everybody. Uh, let's get started really quick. Hi, so uh, my name is Joaquin Rodriguez. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft, and I'm here with Alessandro. Hi, welcome. It's my first time as a speaker, so please be, be nice to me. Uh, I'm a developer relation at uh, solo.io. Okay, so let's get started uh, with a small intro. So uh, why are we doing this? So it all started with punch cards, right? And as you know, things have changed since then. Uh, we started looking into terminals, Linux, you know, uh, app development was a lot different. And then we reached Kubernetes, right? And then we started doing the, um, like the pushing directly using kubectl, apply, et cetera. Um, and then we reached GitOps. Just, I'm just curious, by a show of hands, how many of you have used GitOps? Nice, okay. Now, what's next? We don't know yet. It could be OpenAI, ChatGPT. We don't know yet, but it's kind of cool to be in a place that things are changing, things are evolving, and you know, um, yeah. So, so a lot of a lot of good things going on, right? So, just to recap with the historical context, like I was saying, you know, back in the day, we're doing manual deployments. We're uh, doing kubectl apply. You know, this at the time, you know, it would, it would be there'll be a lot of issues with it, right? Like, you know, you'll be a lot of human uh, errors and inconsistencies, things will not scale up. Um, this leads into the development of CICD tools, like Jenkins, and it was good. I mean, it's still good even these days, you know, a lot of people use tools like, you know, Jenkins and um, workflows, um, and it helped with, you know, consistency and speed and reliability, but it was not enough. So. Now, you know, we have GitOps, uh, we have tools like Argo or Flux, both of them are great. Um, and yeah, so it's, you know, you have a Git-centric approach for doing deployments and, you know, enhanced collaboration, versioning, rollbacks, you know, what, what you see is what you get, you know, doing auditing, logging, like it, it's, it's just really great. So, and also, because now we have GitOps, you know, there's a, the, this evolved into having like a, an organization like Open GitOps to make sure that there's, you know, standards and practices and, you know, it's like a community driven approach. Uh, and yeah, no, this, this, is, this is awesome. So um, again, even with GitOps, you might have some challenges. Uh, some of these challenges are related to scaling, observability, and deployment automation. And it seems like it's like a, like a vicious cycle that the more you scale, the more you care about observability, and then how, well, how do you automate that? So today we're gonna show a quick demo that you know, proposes how we can scale things a lot easier and how to manage and organize our deployments. So I'm gonna pass it over to Alessandro. Yeah, so, yes, so no minions being art uh, in the process of creating this presentation, but uh, we, we use the, the paradigm of, uh, you know, there's Gru, there's a management uh, person, the manager, right? So the, the person that's in charge, uh, the person that, that controls the minions, uh, where the minions actually do the work, right? So no one, no minions get, dies, but unfortunately we do delete clusters, so we don't kill minions, but we, we do delete clusters. There, there's this, uh, phobia of upgrading, right? So th this is what drive us. We, we've been working together at Microsoft, by the way, back in the day, and uh, we had a lot of these customers that were really, really afraid of upgrading things, right? Upgrading clusters, uh, deploying new versions on, uh, on existing clusters. So this is the, the drive here, right? So we, we wanted to show that you can really implement the paradigm of immutable clusters, treat them as uh, always the same, always stamped out of a, of a template, and you never need to really update them because you can just replace them with new, new clusters, shiny new brand clusters ready to accept your workloads and, uh, and serve your, your, your traffic uh, to the world with, with a clean slate. So it's, it's really something that was born out of our experience at enterprise customers, at, at Microsoft as well, uh, and I keep doing, keep seeing this, 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 uh, this fear. And I, as much as you can persuade customers and engineers that, that the upgrades are safe and uh, there are many ways to, to perform updates in a safe, safe way, still there's this, this resistance. 
uh, against uh, moving forward with, the, with an update. So let's see if we can actually create, have this idea of immutable, immutable clusters. So how we do that? So there is a, a great project that is actually Cluster API uh, project update. I don't know if you've been there. Um, it's a project that was born to actually solve the problem of declaratively uh, express the idea of a cluster, right? So as you know, in Kubernetes, cluster is not, uh, was not, at least until a KPI, a cluster API came, came, came around, was not a, a, a first class citizen. There was no object describing a cluster. So this, the, the project filled the gap of creating and understanding clusters as objects inside another Kubernetes cluster. So that's, uh, that's why we choose to, to create this cluster because it's a very popular, it's of course like part of the uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes ecosystem and can be used in many ways. There are many plugins, uh, Azure, Google Cloud, OpenStack, AWS. We will choose and show uh, the cluster API for Azure, which is just uh, the flavor of cluster, cluster API that, um, that interacts with the Azure API and creates cluster in there, but nothing stops you or uh, we, we, we can expand into, into other clouds. And we also, uh, we also gonna show uh, another cool tool, also um, been, been talking about a lot, it is very popular now, it's called vClusters. So imagine you don't want or you don't have the resources to actually spin up a full cluster in the cloud, in a public cloud or, or on-premise, then you can use this uh, little big project called vCluster, um, which is very popular now. We love it, and it gets you new, in, new ephemeral clusters, clusters that, that live inside the managed cluster, but very quickly, uh, and so you can f fulfill more use cases where the provisioning time is, 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 very, uh, is really a crucial uh, parameter. So we had a solution to the problem of scaling, observability, and in this case, we really want to stress that we want to um, show how can you monitor these ephemeral clusters, these clusters that come up and they go down uh, as they come, as, as they go. So clusters that don't live enough to accumulate enough metrics, or they, they you know, uh, if you know Prometheus project is this, uh, idea of Thanos sidecar that will uh, cache for two hours. We really didn't want to do that. We wanted to, to have every cluster coming up and just immediately start to send metrics. Uh, we don't talk about logs, but this is easily ex extended to logs and uh, traces as well. So we want clusters that come up, ship metrics to the central management cluster, and, uh, and when they go away, we can still see the, the history, uh, observe these clusters, even if they are gone. So sort of uh, observing the ghost of cluster past, right? So clusters that are long gone or they are just being replaced by a new one, but you can still trace them. You can still uh, observe their, their behavior because you want to know if they did their job, if they, um, if they were healthy and why they were, they were, if they were not, why. So we leverage so, some crucial technologies. Uh, I will start, then, uh, then I'll pass it along. So of course, Azure, one of the best cloud in the world. Uh, it's just, uh, just it's our playground where we can interact with the, uh, with the public cloud, with the public cloud API, and uh, perform and create clusters as we need. Yeah, and we're using Azure uh, to create the main management cluster. Yeah, so our management cluster, our GRU cluster, is, is actually a, a AKS cluster in Azure. Argo CD, of course, the, the great reconciliator, as I call it. So it just does what it's supposed to do, which is bring in the cluster exactly or as close as possible to the desired state in uh, described in, uh, in Git. So we, of course, we use GitHub, where we store the, the, state, the state of the cluster that we want, in all the state of the cluster, the, the entire state, the management cluster state, with all the infrastructure components and actually the number and properties of the workload clusters. Um, just one thing then. Uh, sure, so um, we're using that trifecta for uh, the web server, we're using Nginx, we're using external DNS, and we're using Start Manager. 
Um, yeah. So we yeah. we don't like nit.io. We, we we like to have like real meaningful DNS names. So of course we we leverage other projects in the ecosystem, namely external DNS, uh, Cert Manager, and uh, Ingress of uh, Ingress Nginx to provide the the automatic discovery and and, uh, and DNS names to to our application. Observability, I think most of you are familiar with this, of course, like a Grafana as a dashboard system, Prometheus to collect uh, and to ship metrics out of the workload clusters uh, and the management cluster itself, and Thanos to collect and to receive these metrics and store them uh, safely. Yeah, so, so just on that, like basically in the group cluster, cluster, right, which is the management cluster, we have Grafana and Thanos uh, and Prometheus too. But then on each worker cluster, we're going to install Prometheus and it's going to do a remote write back to Danos. That way we can reconcile all the, the metrics in one location. Yeah. And to complete the automation, of course, there's, uh, there's this project which I start to love, uh, which is Kiverno. I describe it as uh, if this, then that for your cluster, right? So, and we had an in incredibly good experience where you really showed the, the, the the power of open source. So yesterday we were we were working on this policy to automatically create um, the Argo CD secret that will describe the class has been, just been created, and I couldn't make it work. And then I said, "But hey, Kiverno creators are just in the room, right?" So and then uh, I would like to give a thank to to Jim uh, Bagvadia because he's one of the creator and maintainer of Kiverno. I just worked to him and he helped me out, uh, and it's amazing that. That's why we are here, so we can just help each other. So if he's in the room, I will uh, like to thank him publicly. And of course, Class API. So Class API is also a great project. It's been developed for, for a few years now, and it's really what enables the automation side of things. So, yep. all right. And of course, big clusters, because they, they are awesome, and they are fast, they spin up quick, they, they are effectively clusters like every other clusters that you can interact with, especially notably is synchronization between the, um, the, the, the services in the V clusters and the services in outside the cluster, in the host cluster. So that makes it so easy to, to um, expose the V cluster services through the ingress in the host. It's just, uh, just uh, very, very cool. And uh, I think they have a boot. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and of course, the company behind is Loft. Thank you for, for creating such a great piece of software. And demo time. Demo time. So, okay. do you want to start? But you want to talk about the stack, or you want to talk about it? So this was the stack. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So for the demo, I'm gonna show you first how it is structured. Okay. So we have a repo. And we will show the, the link in a little bit. Let me zoom in. Right. Um, in here, uh, we have, let me bring this up. So essentially, we walk you through how, how to set up this, this stack, right? So, so the first thing, you know, you, have, you need some prerequisites. Like Alessandro was saying, uh, we're using Azure uh, AKS for our management cluster. You can use whatever you like. You can use Google, AWS. That's, that's not a problem. Um, we, that's just what happens what we're using for our demo, right? Um, and then the first thing is we set up the management cluster with Argo. And you know, we provide some, some information uh, you know, about like, the subscription ID, the location, et cetera. Uh, we create the cluster. And then here we install Argo. So the first thing we're going to do, we are going to initialize the management cluster with some tools. And those are under, under GitOps, sorry. GitOps. So we have GitOps, and then we have a management folder. So all the tools that we're going to install in the management uh, cluster are going to be in the management folder. And what we're going to deploy later to the minion clusters or the worker clusters are going to be in the workload folder. Right? So, so we run that. Uh, we initialize Argo. Um, and then we're going to install some initial objects to get us started. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, so this is a completely self-managed mm -hmm. management cluster, right? So every, we really don't want to do it. We, we had to resort to, to few imperative commands, 
but if it was for us, we would also automate the class API deployment if we couldn't uh, so far. But the idea is like you install the initial object and the rest is all uh, is all uh, Argo CD doing its job, right? So so everything is under uh, management. All the external DNS is all is all automated. So yep. Uh, yeah, so then the, the, next, uh, the next step is we installed the uh, cluster API, uh, specifically CAPC, uh, provider for Azure in the management cluster, right? Um, and then, let me show you once that's done. You can see here. So we have basically everything installed, right? And that includes uh, Grafana, and here in Grafana, you know, we have already preloaded with a few dashboards that talk that you know shows, shows about our cluster. Uh, precisely, we want to focus on the IMDB app, which is one of the apps uh, that we deployed as well. Uh, this app is just a simple uh, in-memory uh, web server that you know, it, sorry, uh, in-memory uh, web application that has uh, a database as well, and it just. Uh, logs metrics into Prometheus, um, and then we push those back into Thanos. So uh, here you can see that we already have preloaded a few clusters. Uh, the VC clusters are the, the, the V clusters, and then the Worker 4 and Worker 5 are uh, Cap C clusters in uh, AKS. So, um, yeah. yeah, so, so notably when the clusters come up, uh, Kiberno synchronized the uh, the secret that contains Kube config of the cluster itself with Argo CD. So there's, we're gonna, there are references in there and we, we can look it up yourself. So there is a Argo CD secret to describe clusters are in a special format. So that's why we use Kiverno to translate or, you know, like a, uh, create a, a dependency one to one from, mm -hmm. uh, from the Kube config created by Cluster API or by vCluster to the Argo CD secret that contains the, um, uh, the, the, the cluster definition. We also segregate everything in projects, so we real one of the best practices in, uh, in Argo CD is the, to never use the full project, so we, we try as much as possible to segregate um, the, the management cluster infrastructure, the applications, and the workload clusters infrastructure, including Prometheus, for example, in different projects because that's, uh, that gives you more uh, flexibility and more uh, separation and segregation of roles. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna provision a new uh, V cluster. Um, it will be a little faster than if we were to pre pre uh, deploy a new AKS cluster from scratch. So, uh, so let, let me show you how we will do that. So here, as you can see, this is an application set for Argo, and it's nothing more than a, than a list generator. So here we define our V clusters. We have another one for uh, CAPC, as you can see here. But for V clusters, if, one up, if I want to provision a new cluster, I'm just going to copy this line. And we, we can, I mean, technically we could automate this, uh, but just for the simplicity of the demo, we just did it this way. Maybe like a Helm chart or something. But, Okay, so I added my VC5 cluster. Uh, typically, you will wanna you know, create a pull request and you know, he will approve it and then you know, we'll merge it. But since we're doing a demo, I'm just gonna push straight into main. So, push. Okay, so now, if I go to Argo, this is gonna take a few minutes. Oops, seconds. seconds. It will come up in a little bit. Oh, the out of sync. It's still out of sync. That's why you're filtering for sync. Oh, there you go. Okay, so it's syncing right now. Eventually, you're gonna see here VC5. If the demo gods are good to us. So it was there. Okay. Whoops. It's still filtering for a sync now. Yeah. So, yeah. so now, okay, so we, ha we have uh, VC5. So let's take a look at the pods. This is crashing. Don't oh. mind. 
Never mind. It's okay. It's all good. Okay, so in in a little bit, you're gonna start uh, the pods, the worker pods, starting to come up. Okay. Yeah, it takes a little while. So let's see. Yeah, it's it's so it's sinking right now. Um, anything else you want to add in the meantime? Yeah. So. As soon as, so of course this, uh, this application set creates a, a new application because we, we just, uh, we use the list generator. So the application comes up, um, installs, uh, we, use, we don't use the K3S, we use the, the proper uh, K8S V cluster uh, M chart. So calls the M chart, deploys everything uh, properly, and then, uh, and then creates a secret. And then Kiverno will be uh, the one responsible to, to move or to translate that secret into the proper cluster. So it's still not there, of course, but as soon as this, uh, this, um, this application is reconciled and is actually creating the cluster, it takes really a few seconds, but then, uh, then Argo CD will be able to see the cluster, recognize that the cluster needs to have certain, certain things to be applied to, namely Prometheus, namely the actual workload application, and then we'll just uh, aptly deploy, uh, deploy on top. So, uh, of course, this is the most critical part. Yeah, of course. But we, we trust that it's going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. so it will come up in a little this bit. One? Not yet. Uh, well, this one, you see the VC5 job completed, so ah, it's good. Yes, uh, yeah, so it's, it's doing things, yeah. Yeah, so, and then, when Prometheus comes up, uh, he's gonna tag his own metrics, ship them to to Thanos, and then uh, Thanos will recognize the the, the cluster label and so uh, and move on. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Easy workload. Told you. Yeah, it's coming. Can go forward with the presentation. And yeah, you know, let's let's, we'll do, let's do that. Yeah. yeah. So let me go back to the presentation, and then we'll we'll come back. Yes. To that. Okay. Uh, we were yeah. here in the demo. So a few tricks we and we will uh, we will help if you if you if you need just open a pull request or just uh, reach out to us. So use projects all the time. Don't ever use the full project. Uh, we actually enable. Argo CD in read-only mode, so you can actually go and um, and see for yourself. You cannot do anything, but it's nice to have a, a Argo CD in read-only because doing operate on Argo CD through the portal is as bad as using kubectl for us at least. Um, Server-side apply is actually coming as a default, but we found a lot of resources that are at Pierre if you use server-side apply because sometimes you you generate these CRDs and they are so big and the client-side apply will just uh, blow up in your face. So uh, you, you will see a lot of, of the manifest of Argo CD application will have the server-side um, strategy. Um, we did consider some alternatives. So there is a cluster API, Elmadon, which does the same thing. It, it applies a cluster add-on. In this case, it could be a Elm chart, could be anything else, uh, to a cluster deployed via cluster API, but then you know, it's not it's not very generic mechanism. It's only for cluster API. We wanted to use also Elm to deploy the clusters and so on. So um, yes, and we really wanted to just uh, automate everything, including the cluster API installation. We look into the Capi operator. It's actually pretty promising, but we couldn't make it work fully uh, like we wanted. But of course, uh, also the the manage AKS uh, support for cluster API for Azure is also experimental, so it's also moving very fast and changing, so there's some, uh, some, uh, some more work to be done uh, on that side. And let's see, can you go back? Yeah, let's check, check take a look. Oh, there you Hi. go. Okay, so okay. it's all good. Now, let's see if this is working. Let me refresh the dashboard. And we don't have that yet. It takes a little while. Let's it's take... probably deploying Prometheus on. It's probably yeah, probably deploying Prometheus. You can see the VC. Let's see VC five. 
to increase because they are uh, the cluster, so everything runs in the same cluster. So you can also see the pods in the Vic, in yeah, the so in the cluster. Yes. So this is Prometheus deployed. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been a we didn't do anything about it. We, we, there's no no monkey under <laughs> the, the thing installing Prometheus. Is actually Argo CD targeting that V cluster yeah. and uh, and deploying whatever we need. And also we use sync waves, of course. So it stores Prometheus first and then the application. Otherwise, the application is a service monitor, of course, it will be um, will be failing because they have no service monitor until you install Prometheus. Of course, eventually we'll all reconcile, but we will like we don't like to see mm -hmm. red dots and then uh, and uh, bad stuff. So this should not yet. eventually. It's coming. It's coming. I promise. <laughs> Yeah, 26 seconds ago. So by the time it gathers yeah, the metrics so and as soon as Prometheus comes up, comes up, starts labeling metrics, sending to Thanos. Thanos aptly stores them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the label is loaded only when you load the dashboard. So maybe refresh. Yes, let me let me refresh. Oh, you mean refresh the whole? The, no, uh, the browser refresh. But anyway, so yeah. well, we'll. Uh, We'll show you. We'll go back to the presentation for a minute, and then uh, yeah. Okay, let me just do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, some takeaways. Takeaways, of course. Like uh, this is our stuff, and we know because we've been spending some some uh, uh, quality time <laughs> troubleshooting a lot of these things. Uh, but with the right tool, you can do crazy things like uh, big clusters and. Clusters as a service and uh, all this stuff is were practically impossible a few years ago. Uh, rely on open source, rely on the people of open source. They are amazing. They will help you out if you, if you just ask nicely. Um, and and the, the next thing we want to do is also to split the configuration per cluster type. Of course, uh, V clusters, AKS or other types, they might need slightly different uh, configurations. We don't do that, so we apply the same to everything. But it's probably it, it's not going to take long for us to to come up with a way to customize the, uh, the 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 infrastructure and the workload per per cluster. So, and of course, the next thing we want to show maybe in a, in a future um, future talk is to actually have also the mentioned cluster be in the data plane. Right, so using Istio multi-cluster or uh, some form of uh, uh, API gateway or gateway to actually convey the traffic and then um, use the the minions, the, the workload clusters, to um, to to send traffic to, to different clusters and do like progressive delivery or A/B testing or something more fancy than just uh, I have a cluster I'm deploying. So we, we are not doing anything with the data plane as of now. But that's uh, that's uh, the future um, future expansion of the tool. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, what else? Yeah. And thanks for uh, for uh, Jim. <laughs> that's that's his session from uh, from last time. And uh, and this is our uh, um, repo. And yeah. Drum roll. Drum roll. Hey. There you go. That's a <laughs> Okay, and then uh, there's also some other relevant talks uh, here at KubeCon. Um, if you want to check out, uh, we listed those here. Uh, also, if you want to check out our boot for Microsoft and Solo. Yep. And if you have any feedback for our talk, this is the QR code. Thank you very much. Yep. We might have time for.